SIRDS. You may be familiar with SIRDS. You certainly should have met them at GCSE. But don't panic if uh, you're not familiar with them or it's a subject that you didn't really enjoy at GCSE. I'll start at the beginning and we'll go through things methodically. Our aim is to be aware of what SIRDS are, to understand why we use SIRDS and to end up at the end of the lesson on this being confident in simplifying numbers into simplest SIRD form. So we'll start off with why we have SIRD form. At A-level maths, SIRDs are important. Um, we use them to provide an exact value for numbers and uh, we also use them um, quite a lot in long expressions, algebraic manipulation, where we can cancel out thirds and we can um, play around with them. What do we mean by simplest third form? Well, what we aim to do is to get the third element, the square root element, we can see an example of a third here, to be as small a number as possible. So by definition, a third is the positive square root of a number, and here's an example of a third here, root 18. We can split root 18 up into the square root of 9 times 2, and with thirds, we are able to then split the thirds, so it, just, it goes from the square root of 9 times 2 to square root of 9 times square root of 2, we all know the square root of 9 is 3, so we end up with 3 root 2. So there's an example of simplest third form. Have a look at these two. Pause the presentation a minute. Have a look and think as to whether you can do the same with those two. OK, well I'll talk about root 30 and then I'm going to leave um, the square root of 242 and we'll talk a bit more about that in, in the lesson. Root 30 we can't actually do anything with. This is already in its simplest third form. Yes, there are factors. We can split the square root of 30 up. But because none of the factors are square numbers, we can't reduce the third element. We can change it into two thirds. We could make it root 6 root times root 5. But that is, isn't considered to be simpler than root 30. So root 30 is the simplest third form. And because none of the square numbers, apart from obviously 1, are factors, 4 doesn't go into it, 9 doesn't go into it, 16 doesn't go into it, and obviously nothing else will. Um, for that reason... It's already in its simplest third form. In general terms, then, if we've got a third, which we can split into two factors, so if we've got the square root of AB, we could write that as the square root of A times B, which is equal to the square root of A times the square root of B. So in third form, we can split the thirds like this. If we can make one of these numbers, the a or the b, a square number, this then enables us to simplify the third. And simplest form is where the bit that remains as a third, that remains with the square root sign, is as small a number as possible. So that's the plan. OK, see if you can do these for yourself. Pause the presentation again. Have a go at these three at the top. And then I'll talk you through them. Hopefully you manage those by yourselves. But I'll go through them anyway now. So root 60 was the first one. So root 60, can we split it up? Well, we're looking for square numbers. So which square numbers, starting with 4, go into it. Well, 4 does, doesn't it? Because it's 4 times 15, so we can write that like that. 9 doesn't go into it. 16 doesn't go into it. 25 doesn't. 36 doesn't. And we can see from there that nothing else will. So that's all we can do. We can then rewrite that as the square root of 4 times the square root of 15 which is equal to 2, because the square root of 4 is 2, isn't it? 
root 15. And remember, it's just the positive square roots we're interested in. Root 70. 4. Well, 4 doesn't go into 70, does it? It's 17 and a half, so that's no good to us. Um, 4 times 17 and a half doesn't help. Uh, what else could we have a look at then? 9, no. 16, no. 25, no. 36, no. So actually, this one's already in its simplest form. Root 108. 4 goes in, doesn't it? 4 times 27. 9 goes in. 9 times 12. 16 doesn't go in, does it? Or 25. 36 does, though. So we've got three choices here. What do we notice about the three choices? Well, whichever of these three options we go with, we will always be able to end up at the same answer. But the easiest way is to use the one with the biggest square number. That gives us root 36 times root 3, which is 6 root 3. OK. Pause the presentation again and see if you can work out these three at the bottom. They're a bit harder. OK, I'll go through these now. Uh, this first one... We've got this bracket squared. In other words, we're multiplying out two brackets. I'll go over this because I think it'll help. We'll be doing a lot of work expanding out brackets and factorising expressions, quadratics and things. So it will help if uh, we've got a good method for doing so. I tend to teach the FOIL method but I'm happy for you to use whatever method you're most comfortable with and I'm very happy to help you reinforce those methods. So you don't have to use this method, but I will use it just to explain this example. Looking at the two terms in each bracket, FOIL gives us the first terms first, the outside terms second, the inside terms third, and the last terms fourth. In other words, using FOIL, we look at the first terms in each bracket first. So 2 times 2, 4. We've only got pluses, so we put a plus there. We then look at the outside terms in each bracket. Well, that's the 2 and the root 3 on the outside of the whole thing. So two lots of root 3. Then the inside terms, and again root 3 times 2, 2 root 3. And then finally the last terms, root 3 times root 3, which is 3. We can then gather together our numbers, 4 plus 3 is 7, and we've got 4 lots of root 3, haven't we? 2 root 3 plus 2 root 3. So that's the first one done. For this next one, we've got root 45 and root 72. So we'll do them separately, and we know how to do these from what we did previously. 4 doesn't go into it, 9 does. 16 doesn't, 25 doesn't, so that's all we've got. So we can write that as root 9 times root 5, and hopefully by now you'll be able to spot these a bit quicker. So I've skipped a step there. I haven't written it as the two separate thirds. I'm hoping you can see that straight away. 72. 
fours into 72. It does go, doesn't it? Four times 18. Is there anything else that works? Nine. Yes, nine works. Nine times eight. Does 16 work? 16 doesn't work, does it? 25 doesn't work, but 36 does. So we can see there are three choices. Well, we go with the this one here. So like we did last time, we'd end up with the same answer, but it's 6 root 2. So that's 6 root 2. That's 3 root 5. So our answer is 3 root 5 plus 6 root 2. Final one's quite tricky, isn't it? Have a quick go at it and I'll help you with it in a minute. OK, we're expanding out brackets again, so back to FOIL. First terms first. Root 2 times root 2 gives us 2, so 5 times 2 is 10. That's the first terms, the F bit. Then we've got the outside terms. Minus 2 times 5 times root 2. Well, minus 2 times 5 is minus 10. So we've got minus 10 root 2. We've then got the inside terms, which is plus 3 lots of root 2. And then finally, the last terms, where we've got 3 times minus 2, which is minus 6. Numbers together, 10 minus 6 gives us 4, and minus 10 plus 3 gives us minus 7, lots of root 2, and that's the answer to that one. OK, quick recap then. Thirds are more accurate because we haven't done any rounding. It gives us an exact value for numbers. So it's a much easier to deal with algebraically once they're simplified. So we can cancel them out, we can multiply them together to make whole numbers and things. So much easier to work with.